like I said, you know, Chris had this X Y angle idea a few years before with Gina. Um, basically, Chris set me up. Um, he, he had had got into business with Jerry with the wrestling school. I think he actually did the wrestling school after the tapings on a Saturday okay. morning, I think. But I don't know. It could have gone on in the week as well. I really don't know. Um, I do recall... Um, uh, Chris phoning me up uh, before he asked me to do the angle and it, he would talk about Steve like wow you know he's, I actually think there's potential with one of my students called Steve Williams he, and I, I think he knew something special because most of the um, time Chris would say that a lot of people that showed up he didn't think were going to ever become anything other than this one guy called Steve Williams and that's the only time I heard of Steve at that point. Um, and, and I believe Steve started wrestling as Steve Williams, just the student against the uh, teacher or whatever, um, which I never saw any of those matches. Um, and, then, and then Chris phoned me up and he said, you know, I'd like to try this ex-wife angle again with my student, Steve Williams and would like to bring you in and how do you feel about that and I, I think he, he approached Jerry and got the okay on that and uh, I thought it sounded like a lot of fun I, I was doing um, a lot of my own uh, shows in, in novelty telegrams because I owned a business called Genie so I did novelty telegrams so I was quite used to being a performer because that was the sort of telegrams where you go out and you sing or dance and they're all cute. Like you could do them in restaurants or you could do them in uh, offices and dressed as a cop or a nurse and it's a bit, bit, bit like a prank really uh, to embarrass someone for their birthday or whatever. So I, I had my own business and I was used to like doing about 40 shows a week and and I, I couldn't travel because obviously I had a full-time commitment with my business. Um, but uh, Chris said it Friday night and Saturday morning. And I thought it would be a nice change because um, I had uh, other performers that I hired. And I thought yeah, that, that would be a nice change to, to get out and do that. Um, he, he said to me, uh, you know, if you could... Uh, look at this show called Dynasty, which had uh, a character on there played by Joan Collins called Alexis Carrington. And he said, oh, that's, that's how I want you to be. Um, just like, you know, real smarty, real sort of, I'm better, you know, I got nice clothes and all of this. And so I watched a little bit of Dynasty to get an idea and um, got my uh, dresses and stuff like that from a friend who who owned the shop and she'd let me wear these really really nice dresses and um so uh, i showed up at the sportatorium and tony introduced me to steve for the first time and and he was a little aloof that time i, I actually was tony's like hi honey, this is steve and oh hi steve like no who and he kind of turned around and he walked up the stairs to the clothes nest so i went are you sure that steve's call to do this angle are you sure he wants to because i'm not sure he, he he looks too happy about it um so i didn't know what he was thinking right at first but um as as uh, we started the angle and we plan up the match and talk about the interviews steve and i uh, got really friendly we were you know always having a laugh about the interviews that we did and uh, we bonded as really good friends for, for quite a long time really several months we didn't like go out or date or anything we were how you doing and how was your week and what's what's up and all of that talk about the weather so we we, we were just like really good friends and because he had and, a uh, girlfriend or, an, or a fiance at that yeah, time yeah he right? was married oh yeah oh he was married okay oh yeah he had a fiance um but he 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 told me and um you know that you know he wasn't happy and he wrote me a lot of letters and um, i am friends with steve and i'm 
have no bitterness to David. We have two beautiful daughters. I'm always going to be grateful I met him. And I'm. Some I'm of those letters so are in your book, by the way, for those people listening that want um, to read those my, letters. My, my, my co-writers said they were quite relevant because of that, what you just said, that, that he had a girlfriend. I didn't come across as someone who stole him away because he actually was really instigating a relationship with me. And he really, you know, we thought they, my writers thought they would be relevant um, to to the story of how, you know, this romance blossomed between us. Um, I'm so sure he loves uh, people reading about those <laughs> With his with his uh, tough guy image, I'm sure he's he loves he, that people can read his love letters he, now. It's tough guy, right? You know, he's 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 a he's a nice person. You know, he he's got a really good side. You know, like a day, you know, it's his business, and uh, you know, he, so, yeah. he's quite soft actually. Yeah. So that that kind of charmed you, and then after a while, while well, you were still, yeah. uh, I guess you stopped doing the, uh, the the feud played itself out, and then he went on to wrestle for Jerry Jarrett in Memphis. Because no, no, the, the feud the feud didn't play itself out because Chris had really purposely tried to make that feud go. He wanted it to go for a year because. Um, it, he said he didn't even want to bring Tony in for a couple of months. So it was a shame because we had actually a lot more planned that we talked about where we were going to carry on, carry on, but then it just, something happened. I don't know exactly what happened, but suddenly it was over. Um, right, because Derek, Tony Derek, was Derek, Chris's yeah. new wife that you ended up becoming yeah. good friends with. And I did. it was yeah. gonna. You guys had some cage matches together, I think, and it was gonna go on. But, but as you were saying, so it was. It was just like a, a soap opera because um, Chris, Chris uh, had had like all these different twists and turns and things we were gonna do. So we were quite disappointed, really. Matter of fact, Chris wanted to take the angle to WCW. Um, Steve went on to Memphis, um, and. Some of the time, um, I, I would go to Memphis to see him, and I did a little bit of work in Memphis, but I still had my business and a mortgage and, and uh, a town employee, so I, I went there when I could. Um, and the pay wasn't Steve, great in uh, Memphis, right? Steve was making about $40 a night, from what I understand. Yeah, so, so he said, but I, I really don't know about his... I didn't know what he was being paid at that time, um, but um, I do. I do know that uh, what happened after that is is uh, Steve. When he did come back to Dallas, he he would stay at my house for some of the time, and uh, um, and he used my phone number as a point of contact for his new job at WCW, and. Uh, I got a phone call from uh, Magnum asking for Steve, and I'm um, no sorry, you know he he's at the gym just now. I'll give him a message, and he's like, "Hey, where, where are you from?" Just started up a conversation with me. Um, what do you do? And I said, "Actually, I I did work uh, with Steve here here in Dallas, but that got cut off." He oh really? And and they actually hired a girl to to be with Steve called Vivacious Veronica. I don't didn't see any of her work or know her. I only know that um, they didn't think they, that Steve had good chemistry with her. So Magnum actually asked me, "Do you happen to have any tapes of you and Steve?" Because uh, you know we'd be interested to see them. So I didn't try to get a job at WCW at all. Um, I did end up sending some tapes, and then Magnum phoned me and he said. Okay, he said, I, I, I need you to go to Houston tomorrow and meet Dusty. So I was like, oh, my God, really? So I phoned up Steve, and I'm, he, who is in Houston working, and I said, oh, you know, I'm due to come in today. And, oh, really, I, I'll come and pick you up at the airport. So I, I get to uh, Houston like, on a day's notice, 
and I have an interview with Dust. It didn't last long, about 10 minutes. And um, then Magnum Circa, you, you, you can be at TV in the center stage in Atlanta in two weeks. And it was kind of like, oh, my God, i got to uh, find someone to run my business. And that's when, um, obviously, Dusty came up with the name Lady Blossom and put me with Steve. And Chris and Tony did want to go in and do the, the end of the angle there, but it didn't happen. It would have been great. I would have loved that. Because Steve, I guess, held a grudge over a... Yeah. Before he signed with WCW, Steve had a booking with a different company for, I guess, $100. And Chris Adams had a show the same night. And yeah. he I didn't th- want to... I think to his pay. name was Ed. Um, yeah. Yeah, but basically what happened was Chris said he'd match the pay. So Steve backed out of the other job. And then Chris didn't match the pay. He only got $40 or something. So... Um, according to both Steve and you, from what I understand, he always held a grudge um, towards Chris. Due to well, that. yeah, and I, I, I can understand that, actually, because don't forget back then, um, you know, uh, $100 was a lot of money, as, as Steve would say. It was on a tuna and potatoes diet, and, you know, getting gasoline and um, a hamburger was, like, a lot of money. So when... Chris kind of put him in a corner there because he did take the job with the other guy. And and Chris got a little bit mean there because um, Steve said, oh, you know, I, I, I've already booked for that. And Steve, oh, I'm, I'm, Chris is like, I'm the one who got you started, you know, loyalty should be to me. Um, I'll give you a hundred. And, and, and Steve, won't, he's not the type of person, to be honest, that would, pull out and let someone down he's pretty you know honest if he says he's going to do something and Chris put a lot of pressure on him and then when Steve phoned Chris up and said you know hey you, you've given me like 30 bucks and you told me you give me the hundred Chris goes oh you know uh don't don't you know who I am or well, words to that effect and click hangs up the phone on Steve which was very honest so I, I actually can't blame Steve for having feelings like that. Do you have any highlights of your time in WCW? Um, I thought my, probably my highlight would be a match they had at the Omni, where it was a match with Sting, who I, I was a fan of his work when I first got there. And then we had the match, which was where Steve got the belt, I think, and I had to come in the ring and... Um, that would that probably be a highlight. I don't know if, what, what it was. Also with Bobby Eaton, when, when we got the TV title match, that would have been a highlight for me too. And and it was so cool having a T-shirt, you know. <laughs> so, oh, but that's, that's probably a very, very rare T-shirt because I think the T-shirt came out for a couple of weeks before um, I left. So... Um, I don't think they, you know, that T-shirt was out there for very long now. It's probably worth a lot these days for anyone that has it. <laughs> I don't know anyone who has it. I used to have a couple, but long gone. I don't know where they are now. Of the originals, I've, I've not copies, you know. Someone made me a copy there. <laughs> I guess to, to quit your business, you must have been offered a pretty decent-sized contract with WCW uh, to, to leave your business and, and go on the road with WCW. Well, I didn't... I got uh, a con, con... I came in at 75000 a year, um, and uh, I sold my business, but also bearing in mind... Um, you know, Steve and I were dating and um, we wanted to be together at that time. And, you know, we were talking about getting married, so um, it was a serious relationship. And so I wanted to be with him at that time as well. And you ended up getting pregnant, according to your book, that was not planned. Uh, and that's what actually yeah. took you out of WCW. Was that were you originally just going to go on a leave, or when you got pregnant, did you say, "Okay, I'm just going to be a stay-at-home mom for a while and leave my contract"? Um, 
I don't recall exactly how it happened, but I think the office spoke to Steve and not me, believe it or not. Um, so, um, I, I did notice um, I felt a little sick, and um, actually my daughter was born on July 7th, 92, so if you rewind it, you you can see I was probably about a month or two pregnant at Halloween Havoc match, um, and I couldn't take any more bumps, and I, I think actually Steve spoke with the office about that before they, you know, just said, you know, that was it, and, and I was off, but I was quite happy about that because... Um, you know, well, we were talking earlier, uh, childhood, um, I never really had a good family life, and, and then going from territory to territory with Chris, obviously that wasn't a good family life, so to me the, the actual option of um, getting married and, and having kids and having a family life was actually more of something I, I had a hope and dream of, more than working in the industry, so... To me, it was like looking at houses and looking at baby stuff. To me, was like more important than working as Lady Blossom. So I was happy about leaving. It wasn't anything bitter, and I think we just, you know, that was it. And I was happy about that. Did they pay you out? I think the rest Madeline of your called. I think Madeline. Uh, yeah, yeah. I think Madeline called Steve, and Steve said, "Oh, it's over." And I was like, "Okay," and he said, "No problem," you know. Where we we had a very happy marriage for the time we were in Atlanta. Do you only have one child with Steve, or is there more than no, one? No, I have two. Two, okay. <coughs> Stephanie and Cassidy, yeah. Okay. Well, yeah, I two. haven't got There's, to that part of the book two. yet. <laughs> no, I have three. And Cassidy was born in 1996. Does Stephanie right, still live right with you? Right about the, the time. F- no, Stephanie lives in Los Angeles. Okay. What's what's she doing nowadays? She, Stephanie uh, is a stylist. Okay. She's got a great job out in Beverly Hills. She's a stylist. She um, has her own apartment. She looks after herself. She comes home twice a year to the UK to be with me and her sister. And she's actually having a really good relationship with her dad, so I'm happy about that. Um, they visit all the time, so things are going great with Stephanie right now.